Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what time of day it is, no matter what's going on in your life. I said this yesterday. I'm going to say it again today. You're, you're a follower of Christ now. And that means good things are going to come your way. That also means the adversary is going to pursue you a little harder than he used to. But actually, he pursued you harder then, but he had you. You didn't know his work. You didn't know how he worked. Now you know how he worked. Now you see him clearly. You understand? And he's going to pursue you. Just keep that in mind. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right, Lord Jesus. I ask you to continue to watch over me, my wife, our children, Lord Jesus, uh, our loved ones, our friends, our co-workers. Lord, I ask you to use us as you seem fit to bring forth your word how you want us to bring it forth and use whoever you want to send our way to tell us what they need to tell us and make it so we can listen to them and make it so they can listen to us. The Lord is Jesus. As you use me, as you sing fit to bring forth this word and all understand all truth. Send your Holy Spirit, the comforter, to teach me and direct me in regards to my words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Acts chapter 6. I'm not going to read long. I'm just going to read. This is like going to be a precursor to most likely what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Acts chapter 6. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there rose a murmuring among the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called a multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So as you can see what's going on right now is like they zeal for the kingdom. They zeal to spread the word. It's like putting everything else on the back for a burner. You understand? It's like Hey man, I can't just keep doing this. I need to get out there and do what God called me to do. And you're going to go through those moments too. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Do you see what they, the change is happening in them? You understand? You know, the last time he's like, let's go fishing. Now it's like, hey, let's get out there. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, and proselyte of Antioch, whom they sent before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. You see, speaking in the Holy Ghost, it's not always tongues, it's straight up. Tongues is a spiritual gift. But you know what? It's, it's another spiritual gift. Understanding of the word. Being able to preach it. Being able to spread it. Then they stubborn men which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So here they are. They're attacking Stephen's character. Trying to make it look, make it lies up. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. And set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly to him, saw his face as it has been the face of an angel. Lies. I just, what I talked about this morning before I even started, the adversary is going to come after you even harder now. Why? Because he want to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. You understand? Send false witnesses his way. Have you ever experienced something like that as a sense you've been a follower of Christ? You're going to. It's written. You understand? But guess what? 
the Lord's going to give you boldness just like he gives Stephen boldness. And I'll read further on in that later. But let's start this daily commute today. You see, the Holy Spirit is not what most people think. You understand? The Holy Spirit is not what most people think. They think you got to have certain characteristics in order to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You understand? Oh, I keep talking about tongues because people keep focusing on it. But as you can see, so many people being filled with the Holy Spirit, they're not speaking tongues. Something else happened. The Word of God came into their heart and their soul. And they didn't be taught by man. They were taught by God. You understand? They were taught by Jesus. They were taught by the Holy Spirit. That's a spiritual gift. To be able to understand and spread God's Word. That's a gift. You understand? And guess what? The apostles had it. Stephen had it. You understand? And it's crazy. Every time somebody filled with the Holy Spirit starts their ministry, persecution arises. Do you understand? There's always somebody persecuting them. There's always somebody trying to stop them. The adversary. The adversary takes human form plenty of times. That's why Jesus told you so many times in the Bible, you are of your father, the devil. And the works that you do, that he do, you got to do too. You understand? So you got God's people and you got the devil's people. And they always fighting. Not necessarily fighting, but debating and warring against one another. Mainly, the adversaries just loves to accuse falsely children of God. Like to say things against them. You understand? Again, let me go back again. You know, I, recently, I had come to my knowledge the same thing that came to me years ago. The devil wants you bad. Now, this is like the third time I've heard this from someone. And I was praying. I was talking to my father. Like, why does the devil want me so bad? You know what the, that voice in my head said? You already know the answer. Because you are called by me. To do some work. And guess what? The enemy wants to hinder God's work. But he can't hinder it. I want to go further into what, what happens in regards to Stephen. But I'm going to save that for tomorrow. You understand? I'm going to save that for tomorrow because it's a little long. It's a lot to read. Tomorrow I'm going to save that for another day but just know your world is going to turn upside down literally why did I say that because you're born again a change happens in your life so guess what your world is going to be turned upside down it's going to go from you being one one way today and another way tomorrow and guess what the adversary sees it he sees that that change in you has taken place. So that's why he's trying to withdraw you back. That's why he tried to get Job to curse God and die. He's going to try to send things your way to try to test your faith. But you know what? When you got the Holy Spirit, the comforter around you, it doesn't matter. He said he'll give you words to say when the time comes. Wisdom comes from the Lord. You understand? Not that I have anything against people who learn the word from man. It's a start. It's a start to learn from man. But guess what? It's got to come a time in your life when you're trusting in the Holy Spirit to teach you. It's a lot of things man can't teach you. You understand? Yes, men endowed with the Holy Spirit can teach one another. But you got to understand, people. There's a difference between worldly studying and studying in the Holy Ghost. You understand? There's a big difference. Man has a perception of things that's different from God's perceptive perception. So just keep that in mind. You understand? But let's go back to the issue at hand. In Acts, the apostles are reaching a point in their lives when the zeal for God's kingdom want them to stop doing a lot of things. They're like, man, I'm tired of these tables. Let's put somebody over this. You understand? Like in my Bible, it says, 
the start of deacons, the beginning of appointing deacons to the ministry. And basically, Stephen was a deacon. Well, the word says that a deacon has to be skilled too in the word. You can't just appoint anybody to be a deacon just because they show up to church every day. Do you understand? They must also be skilled. You gotta be careful out here. You understand? You gotta be careful out here. People gotta know what they're talking about. The deacons knew just as much as the preachers. You understand? They knew good. They knew well too. Stephen was endowed with the Holy Spirit. They laid hands on him and he received the Holy Spirit. But he already was full of faith. He just gave him more power. The word of the scriptures so pure, so accurate is ridiculous. But he told Peter, when you are endowed with power from on high, strengthen the brethren. And that's all you always see. Peter laying hands on some brethren. Because Peter is getting to a point where he understands. He understands the workings of Christ. He understands the workings of his father. He understands what God's will for his life is to be, is to make more disciples, to make more followers of Christ, not more followers of him. You didn't see, you're not going to see um, Stephen filled with the Holy Spirit start glorifying Peter. He's going to start glorifying God. Do you understand? People in this day and age, they glorify their preachers more than they glorify God. But the thing is, the preachers, instead of rebuking that, they accept it. They love it. They love the higher seats. You understand? Characteristics of the Pharisees, they love all that. Like they are star. You understand? I have to give you a story in regards to a billionaire preacher over there in South Africa. When he comes up to the church, he comes to the church in eight Bentleys. And then before he even stepped out of the church, they'd already rolled out the red carpet. You understand? He has a, every Sunday, he comes in like he's a superstar. That's not what God has called you to be, a superstar. He called you to be a follower of Christ. It's all about pushing Christ, not pushing your own agenda or exalting yourself. It's all about exalting Jesus Christ. But you know, when it, when it first started off in Acts, they said people were murmuring against the Hebrews because they neglected their women in the daily ministration. Like, hey, they need to do something about this. I'm trying to see what God was trying to tell me in regards to that, but I guess that'll come another time. But that's what it started off with. Kind of weird to start off that chapter with that. And then immediately after that, what happened? The pastor's was like, man, we're tired of this. Basically, it's like they brushed that off. They pulled a Jesus. I must be about my father's business, woman. Like he told his mother. I must be about my father's business. God's going to take care of you. But I got to be about this business. And sometimes you got to get in your life where... Your father's business overrides everybody's. Even your own plans. Sometimes even your wife. Sometimes even your husband. Sometimes even your kids. You can't love mother, father, sister, or brother more than you love me. If you do, you cannot be my disciple. The Bible says it. He wants to be first in your life. You don't want nothing to distract you from a, a comp I mean, accomplishing his will in your life. You don't want nobody to stop you. Do you understand? No matter what. You see, the enemy has many tools. He can come in and form your children. He can use your husband. He can use your wife. He can use your close friends. He can use your mother. He can use your father. He can use anyone. I hate to say it like that, but it's true. 
That's why you got to seek God and get to know him on a personal level so you know exactly what you should be doing. Because one thing about it, when the enemy wants to attack, because we are all prone to the enemy attacking us. Even the Peter, even Peter was attacked by Satan. He was like, get behind me, Satan. That we told Peter. Peter had said something that he knew wasn't of God. And he rebuked Peter behind it. Peter, you don't know what you're talking about. Get that devil out of here right now. And sometimes you have to do that regards to people and friends and places. You don't know what you're talking about. I rebuke you. One thing about it, as you grow as a Christian, your father's going to talk to you. He's going to tell you things. When you start reading Acts, you're going to see how obedient they were to a lot of things. They were like, well, I got to go this way. And then they meet somebody here. You're going to see exactly how you should walk as a Christian. The disciples give you an example. It's not like, you. I'm not saying you're going to be just like them. You're going to be the best you God created you to be yourself. He doesn't want you to model yourself after anybody else. When he told Peter, when he was worried about John, you just follow me. Don't worry about John. I got John's mission. Don't you worry about Houston. I got Houston's mission. Don't you worry about that person. I got their mission. You just worry about your missions. Stop worrying about other people. Just do what you call to do. You're too busy worrying about other people so you're not even doing what you're supposed to do. But you understand, the Holy Spirit works in so many different ways. If you pay attention, you will see it operate in your life. And you're also going to see who else operating in your life. The devil. Let me pause right for a first second and I will continue.